attracting a, a crowd. I'm happy to see so many folks here. Thank you. Good to see you. I know you. So I'm Tristia Bowen. I am the directing attorney of uh, housing at the Law Foundation of Silicon Valley now. I've been in that position for about five months. Before that, for years, I was a senior attorney at the National Homelessness Law Center where I worked across the country to fight the very type of ordinances that were recently enacted here in Gilroy. Mm -hmm. Before that, I was a criminal defense attorney in Miami, and I've been practicing for 17 years. So I, I know that I, I don't look like what you might expect. <laughs> you know, I, I'm also a Gilroy resident, and I'm a mom, that's, that's my family, you may have seen. That's, this is my family right here. <laughs> well, you know, you don't have to look homeless to be homeless either. <laughs> right? I, I, but, you know, you want to be comfortable at the park. It was just, you know. We're all good with it. That's right. So, um, so I'm really glad folks are here. What I'm hoping we can do today, and, you know, I, I'm only part of this meeting, but what I'm hoping we can do today is we can start thinking about strategies, things that we can do not only to protect people who are going to be affected by this ordinance that goes into effect very soon, it's going to be enforceable beginning in a few weeks, but also what other than combating the ordinance, what is it that we collectively want to work toward? What needs to be here in Gilroy that will help people feel safe, secure, and get people into the housing or whatever else it is that they're looking for as a community? This is an opportunity to organize and advocate for that. And I can tell you that I am willing to help in any way possible. I have a legal skill set. You all have your own skill sets, and we're here building, you know, our process moving forward. You know, I, I'd like to see, I'd like to see somebody from the homeless be on the city council to represent us. You know, that's what we need because it's like having a roofer do a plumber's job. How can you have all these these people that are, are uh, volunteers or whatnot and making money off of us? They don't know anything about homelessness, so how are they going to fix it? Can right? folks hear him? Can can you hear what he just said? I, I talk little guys, but I think that's important and, and education in school about homelessness for the future. You know, it's not just now; it's going to affect everybody later too. So this is a big deal to me. You know. So I agree with that. I mean, obviously representation. That is that is one of the big issues. Is that uh, I think the city council members don't see themselves as representing people who don't have physical addresses in traditional housing. So, you know, what, what can we do? One thing we can do is organize to, you know, to push forward a candidate or more. Yeah. You know, what I can tell you, looking at the last election, it looked like the top. That's right. Yeah, that's right, you did. Oh, you did. I voted for you, Jan. <laughs> the, uh, it looked like the top uh, vote earner got about 5,000 votes. We're not talking about, like, insurmountable numbers. It it's very doable. Excuse me, oh, excuse myself. my name's <clears throat> Brian, I'm losing my voice. I think the best thing you gotta do is do what Rita did. You have to, somebody within your guys' group has to stand up and march, hold the signs, go to the city council meetings. Uh, really can tell you, she did it. Um, but before, uh, that's what I would recommend, before going directly and trying to run, for uh, council is do what uh, Rita did, is you gotta rally the people. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you see, my, my point here is this. If it's such a big deal to the city council, it shouldn't really have to be an issue to get somebody on the ho uh, that's homeless to help out the problem, I would think. And we all know, right, the homelessness was passed by the Supreme Court. is against the law to be homeless, to set up a, to have a tent set up anywhere, anywhere in California. Right. In Chinatown and Salinas, they haven't enforced it yet. Most of the people are in the UP tracks. They're in the train tracks. I have pictures of it to show the area. And it's like a battle between you're stuck in uh, Department of Transportation, but the city pushed us there and cleared the hole. So if they go back in, uh, across the fence, and step into the core of Chinatown and set up a tent, they take it and they haven't started writing citations yet. But once that happens, it's gonna kick off all over, all the way, all throughout. Uh, California, wherever there's homeless, once one person gets arrested for setting up a tent, then it's going to really, then it's going to show, and then people are, well, what needs to happen is people come together and say enough's enough. That's what we're trying to do in uh, Chinatown, but we're losing 
a lot of people every day, like two to four people every day we've been losing besides just random murders. The Fed now, I even lost my mom. I left uh, Chinatown two and a half years ago do, working for the downtown street teams. I was part of the COVID-19 for the city um, and going out on my own even and I uh, got my COVID money and do, trying to do what the city wasn't picking up and I was going 60 hours and more just volunteering and I still do that. I'm waiting to get a job. I'm staying in the sprung shelter that they have in hopes that I get a voucher. Right now I ran into some issues in there so I'm not in there. I'm trying to get back in there. I already did everything that they told me to. You see, but that's Salinas and you guys don't have that set up but that's what I mean. You're pretty much in the beginning of a fight like what Rita did back in 2012. She had never been homeless in her life. And then had to start getting people together, getting people who could follow rules. And as much as they follow rules, they got their stuff taken every time and moved and harassed. But you gotta start some kind of structure. There has to be somebody within your group that's gonna rally the people and so on and so because that's what we do. Me and Rita, besides you being- the campsite, get everybody together. Yeah. The, it's tired. And, it, and it's tired, and say, you gotta they want go, help. Gotta go. Yeah. You gotta go where, right? Because they tell you you gotta go, but they can direct you to leave, but they can't direct you where to go. Yeah. So, I mean, and put it every not to be moved all the time. Just like we're still mm -hmm. getting, we need organized space for people to be. Yeah. So this way the services can go there. I was just asking right now, they don't send nobody out here for you guys? No, they just keep you toilet trees and stuff. The, so how is that gonna help yeah, you? It, right it does help by cleaning your butt, taking a shower. But what about housing? Yeah, so they yeah. need those kind of services out here. You know, you guys don't want us here, but how are you gonna help? How are you gonna help us get back on track? You know, nobody asked to be homeless. Did you say, well, you know, tomorrow I want to be homeless? Or I think right. up, I'm right. yeah. You know, nobody wants to be in the oh, economy. Yeah. Rent is so high, it's hard. And yes. even if you get a voucher, Ridiculous. it's still hard because the rent, if they say you can hire it, landlords are hiring it more and more and more because they know they're going to get that money because they have all these programs in case your tenant don't pay. Mm -hmm. So, what happens if your tenant can't pay? Those programs need so people can pay rent so they don't end up out here. Because when they're talking about homeless, it's not just adults. There's a lot of children. Yeah. But they, fail, yeah. they forget to look over that. Mm -hmm. But when they're saying these people are doing this and that, we're saying that about those people's, those kids' parents. Yeah. You know, the kids hear that too, but they don't think about anything of that. So we have to remind them, it's just not us, it's our families. There's so many families that become homeless every single day. Are, are they on drugs also? Or what, what's going on there? There's a problem. The rent is too high and it's hard to live. That's mm -hmm. right. You know, and plain and simple. But will the city say that? No. Yeah. Do they have any affordable enough affordable housing in the city for the people? So people got to start saying that we need more affordable housing. We need more things so we can live. You know, not just people that have money live here, right? Yeah. So you guys are both. You guys are both flagging. I think really important things. Part of what we come together here to talk about today. You're talking about like different tactics. There's marching. There's sign waving. There are all kinds of things that we could do to. And what? Yeah. And what? Commit tactics? yourself to support every, every city council meeting. Make sure you're yeah. there. If they're talking about homelessness, make sure you're there. That mm -hmm. might work for you guys, but it doesn't work for us. We're the people that yeah. live out there. Right. That's right. You know? And so I think, so here, here's, a, here's a thought that I had and some of what I think uh, we were going to talk about today is to get at what you're talking about, which really fundamentally is the most important thing. What is it that people need and want, right? They need housing. They need housing that they can afford. The city council doesn't have to... Um, accept that the rent is unaffordable. The data shows that. The rent is unaffordable. There's only three units for every 10 households in need. That is established, that's well studied. We can show that data. What they need to hear from you is what do you need? Housing ultimately is the long-term solution. Are there shorter term solutions? You'd mentioned, you know, a, a structured setting where people can stably or camp. More shelters, but most important, yeah, structured. And I think organized space. Organized space is the, exactly. I like that phrase. So you know, these are the things that I think we would need a data record in order to help support advocacy in the courts. Now that's another strategy. That's you know, that's the one that that I am most prepared to talk about because that's the one that I specialize in. Having said that, that's only one strategy, and when you want to use that tool is going to be up to you. Mm -hmm. And first, I think we want to figure out what, what are we fighting for? What would we use a lawsuit, or what would we use marching? What would we use those things toward? And a way that we can establish that and to really uh, build, I think, momentum is by um, asking people of the various things that could be available 
how would you rank them? So that we can say, we talk to the community, this is what the community has asked for. It's not one person saying it. Right. It's not me as a, as a, you know, as a lawyer saying it representing people. This is what the community is identifying as their needs. That sets the goal and then we use tactics toward those goals. But that requires things that people don't always like, like surveys. How many surveys have y'all done? I'm sure people are sick of surveys, but it is an instrument for identifying what people want and how they feel. Focus groups, another way that we can identify how people feel what they want. But knowing the common goals are gonna be really important so that we're all aligned and moving toward a destination together. Mm -hmm. So what, how's, how's, what's how's the headcount? Head what's the total uh, headcount right here in Gilroy of people displaced from their home? Yeah, great question. So, you know, they, they use the point in time count. The 2023 data for Gilroy hasn't been released yet. They have released the preliminary data for Santa Clara County. I can look that up. I don't know, they Jan. Told me July we have it. Um, last year, when we did the count, it came out to 866 in Gilroy. That includes the people at the Armory and the Ochoa yeah, Shelter we the of the winter. Yeah, yeah. So we went back this year and did it, but we don't have the, but we should have the numbers in July. And then I don't know if they're going to break out the South yep. County part of the survey for us too. That the, um, you know, the surveys did right. after yeah, more, we did, yeah, with more detail. Um, you know, and we'll see, we'll see where we are. But you know, I, I, I think, you know, a different, a different kind of survey like would be getting down to like what's. What's needed? I mean, people need to know their rights. They need to know where they're mm -hmm. allowed to be. Yeah. These are things people ask me. Well, okay. Well, here's the ordinance. But where does that mean I'm allowed to go? Exactly. You know, or what are my rights if I'm on private property? Or what are my rights if my if I'm disabled and I can't move all my stuff by right. myself right now? No compromise. Yeah, that's right. So that what we did, that cat sites, which is really good, is the fact that can again to get a group of people together that are willing to go to different cat sites. How many people are there? How many women? How many men? Right. If there's any people that dis disable, um, if they have, if they have, whatever, you know, log it down to this way when you go, you're able to say, this is how many of us are out here that are sick or whatever. Right, I mean, right. you know. And how many people already did a VI spadat? How many people already yeah, are you did trying the cars, to get housing? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. So if you've already signed up for services, then you should have a place to wait for your services. You know, instead of being out scattered around, because yeah. how are they going to get a hold of you? Exactly. They're keep running you out, right? Exactly. So, a place to be. <clears throat> I'll say, like, um, you know, there is um, a lot to do with like a homeless voting block. Uh, you know, like uh, if, if there's a lot of people that are registered to vote, you can use that as as an address. Um, sticking and staying. So in in Sacramento, there is a camp called Camp Resolution that actually started from a gal that she's paraplegic from the neck down. So, you know, they, they had to move her from the riverbed back up, back down. Uh, the cops were constantly moving her. And so the folks that were supporting her were getting tired of moving. So they actually started a protest camp for like eight months now, and they just got a lease in the last like six weeks or so. Um, and, you know, so they're, they're doing it. Basically, they, they just stuck it out and made it a protest, plastered it with um, all kinds of, uh, you know, like, like, well, we had these signs right here. And, uh, you know, just voicing the needs that you need, right? Somewhere to be 24 hours a day and uh, uh, running water and electricity, and, you know, the basic elements of housing. So, I mean, uh, trying to stick and stay is kind of what happened, like, like with uh, Shore Park, too. Um, you know, people lose their things, but they, they they stuck it out as a community, you know, no matter what. And that, that's actually the, the relationship is probably your most important piece mm -hmm. of, of everything, you know, because how are you going to work it out and who's going to be in charge and like like what kind of standards are we going to have? Minimal health and safety standards, that's it. So it sounds like a survey um, has received at least a decent response. I haven't heard anybody say that that would be a bad idea. Does anybody think it's a bad idea? Okay. I also heard know your rights. I think that's going to be really critical. Yes. And you know, there are a couple ways to think about know your rights. Mm -hmm. One is know your rights under this new ordinance. Yes. Well, do we have any? Yes, <laughs> technically yes. And the thing is you always have rights under federal laws mm -hmm. that apply here. And so that is, that's a role that I can, I can play. I'd be happy to come and do some Know Your Rights uh, trainings. Absolutely. So that, 
that you have uh, that you have some of that uh, material. We can figure out exactly what that would look like, how, when. But I mean, you've got you've got rights to possess your property if it's your property, and it's not contraband, and it's not creating a true documentable health and safety right. concern, such that it's like a bomb that's about to explode yeah, or something right. that is going to actually <laughs> harm people. Then you have a protected Fourth Amendment interest right, in that property. Right. Anything that you're doing to Right. They can't take it without no, adequate yeah. due process. Yeah, like now, <laughs> what does that all mean? As with everything in the law, all of our rights are nuanced. So if you're looking for clear, bright lines like, I should be able to do this, but under these circumstances I can't do that, I just want to manage expectations right now. It's a lot more nuanced than that. But you do have rights that can't be deprived without minimum due process, and you cannot be criminalized for your status, whether that's your housing status, whether that's your racial status. You're not allowed to be criminalized under the Constitution, under the Eighth Amendment, for your yep. status. Now, how that plays out in reality, this is this is where the nuance lies, because we know how the law is used. We know that property gets taken from people all the time, and some of what we'll be figuring out is where the rights exist in in enumerated law and what we could argue to a court and then how to handle what actually happens on the ground because there's a, a, an entirely different legal yeah. strategy attached with that. Chris. I was going to have um, Tristina's husband, Chris. Um, I was going to ask the question to, to the group here. Um, the city will, will say we have a plan for affordable housing. We're building these units, but I'm not sure how um, how much they've uh, again talking about surveys, talking about your opinions, how much they've reached out to you and asked what is affordable. Um, have you been able to communicate to the city like, look, this when we're talking about affordability, we're talking about affordable housing and things that we can actually afford. This is what that is. They would do so, either low income housing authority or. Uh, yeah, they haven't done that at all. So, so they're not the city who, who supposedly has plans for low-income housing doesn't necessarily have your understanding and what your needs are and what is affordable to you in mind when they're... Right. Yeah, most of everybody, mm -hmm. unless you have Social Security, it's really don't have income or AFTC or G8. Mm -hmm. they, use, they use federal definition. So there's, there's a definition for what counts as moderate, low, and extremely low. And it's based on area median income, so it's gonna vary from community to community. But it doesn't it's not it doesn't bear upon an actual understanding of what the homeless in our local area can afford. Which and is also really, which really extremely be poor. Right. Five years. Okay, that's great, but in the meantime, where are people yeah. supposed to be? You know, I think our city council, one of the things that, that I have a hard time explaining to people is the connection, and I think we need to find a way to show that, you know, is that everybody who lives here has a connection to the community. It's like just because you're not in a in a bricks and mortar house doesn't mean you're not involved in community events, that you don't have family here, that you don't have friends here, that you don't shop exactly. in the stores and we pay taxes like and pay food, whatever, cigarettes you know? and yeah, yeah, food and motels and everything else. And and people and because because the question they're always asking me is, well, why, why don't they move someplace cheaper? You know, and it's like, that about? is, that's, that's, a, the, that's the not understanding, you know. Why should people have multi-generational ties to this Yeah, does it be born here or beautiful here or family here? And I, I think there here? has to be a way of getting those stories and getting that out. You know, the other stuff you're involved in, the volunteer work and the, you know, events and, because, you know, everybody has, has multiple roles and identities. Right. You know? Yes. You know, and and we need to show, you know, I, it, I I'm not really just defined by where I live. You know, I do all these other things. I worked here. I did this. I'm retired from such and such. Right. You know, and and to let people see your 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 life history here. Right. And right. include that in the surveys. The denial. A lot of the people and the powers that be, because I, I think it's not just city council people. I mean, I see the sign right. next door, et cetera. Oh, yeah. You're they're they're in denial that people that are homeless <laughs> oh, in this community are from Gilroy. Right. You all, right. I don't know how many of you are, are from Gilroy, but I'm sure many of the people that, are, native, that are unfortunately homeless. But, but yeah, right. Native, but are yeah. people that have, yeah, this is most this of their life. To live. It's not like they moved here to be homeless here, which right. is the impression yeah, that they no. try and give. 
Oh, yeah, because it's great. So, it's so much fun being homeless. You're just ridiculous. We'll take that. All over the it's easy homeless. being homeless. It costs you nothing. Yeah. You know, do they know? It's more expensive. Uh, you don't I have a refrigerator. You don't have it. So, you're going through your things yeah. a lot. You know, ridiculous. I hear them say that. It costs nothing. Whatever. Perception of this goes way back. It goes way back, and nobody's changed their mind about it. We're, like I said before, hobos and bums. You know, we don't count or whatnot. But what I what I see here, we got urgent need. Yeah, we do. But you know, really, for most of us, it's about done. What we need to do is look for the future, prepare for that now, for later, for other people, so it won't be so hard, so that you know they can have the information. If, if we don't stop now and do that for the future, we'll be doing this all year long, mm -hmm. over and over and over. Year after year. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I mean, because it's been, it has been, it's been decades that yes. some of the myths and stereotypes have developed and it hasn't evolved, even though the population has grown. We now know that it affects people across, across the spectrum and it doesn't affect everyone equally. I mean, you know, 40% nationally are people with disabilities. Now why is that? Because we've got systems that are set up to advantage people who are able-bodied over people who are not. We have 60% are people of color. You know, why is that? Because we have a, a number of systems that produce racist outcomes. Yeah. And so we can, we can address those bigger pictures that ultimately are rooted in, in who has power and who doesn't. And some of the ways we do that is by telling stories. So, you know, to, to Jan's point, telling the story of who, who you are, your connection to this community that can justify why you would want a housing option when one comes available because everybody's on the VI Spadat and eventually something might come up, but it's gonna be in San Jose. We'd explain that people want to be in their own communities. And there are a bunch of different ways we can do that. So, for example, using a survey instrument, we could ask questions. Where did you graduate from high school? Where were you last housed? Where do you go to church? Where, you know, where do you consider your community? Different, you know, data sets that we can capture. We also can use different strategies. People can come to a city council hearing. They have to make space for people to uh, offer comment, even if something's not on an agenda. And they would need to consider whether they should add that item that's raised to a future agenda. You can tell your story. I am a person who is, you know, who's been in Gilroy since, uh, you know, my grandparents were in Gilroy. I am now in Gilroy. Your housing element has no plan for me. I am displaced from this community. And the housing element's their plan for affordable housing. Right. Or it could be uh, you have enacted a policy that is displacing me actively from my community. What are you going to do in response to that? How are you going to serve me? We can tell our stories in the media. I mean, there are, there are a bunch of different ways that the stories can be told to help reframe the narrative, and it can be done collectively. It's really important that the folks here decide what story they want to tell and tell it themselves, and don't have people like myself as mouthpieces for you. You tell your own stories, and, and, and allies will stand with you. I'll tell you another angle um, with uh, uh, Camp Compassion in Novato. They, uh, they actually, they were facing an eviction as well, and a new ordinance, and uh, they were going to clear it out where they were at. There were about 24, 28 people, and so there was about uh, two people that would call everywhere on the list um, of all the services that were available within that city, you know, and, and say, okay, how many openings do you have? What kind of wait list do you have? Uh, you know, what do you have available? And, and jot that down and prove the point that they, these 28 people, they had nowhere to go. And, uh, and that actually forced the city to create a, a little enclave behind a building with fencing and lattice, complete autonomy like an apartment complex uh, for those 24, 28 people. And, uh, you know, so the police and the security, they couldn't come in, they had to ask, you know, and, and somebody would have to come to, to the entrance. So um, it's doable, it's possible, um, you know, hopefully with lawsuit and, you know, precedent, uh, we, we can, we, you have to gather some research yourself to be able to prove the point to the judge that the city and the, and the services are not meeting uh, your needs and, and that you've been trying to reach out and here's, here's what you've gotten from them and then prove that it's not enough, it's inadequate. So knowing that there are a lot of different approaches 
and that there's a time sensitivity and we've identified some things that folks are interested in. Um, how, do, how do you suggest we move forward? What are the next, what are the next steps? Well, obviously you have to do the city council meeting. Yeah. That's for sure. Get more informed. Um, we really don't have any information from any, from them. You know, we don't, it's, it's like I said earlier. Is that okay if I take notes? Sure. Okay. Um, like I said earlier, you know, it's more like they've pitted us against the town. Yeah. And, and the town's people are, are blindsided, you know. So so any information that goes out is going to be all bad, and any information we get is none. Yeah. They don't supply us where we can go. They don't tell us where we can go to after they kick us out and take our stuff and crush it, you know. They put on there that there's 90 days we can, we can reclaim it, but it's not there. Um, you know, they put the water district in on the date before the date that they're supposed to move us out, so they catch us off guard and, and they displace us that, that with the police's true. help. That was in I 2018. Mean, you know, it, mm -hmm. it, it took, tore my tent apart, uh, it took my my, uh, my, glass referral. my my referral, so I couldn't for my glaucoma. Um, they just, I had garbage. My law books? Yeah, for law my books. Class. All the garbage we picked up for everything, I thought they came to clean the, the creek. No, they came to clean us out. So when I said I've got 14 bags of garbage and cleaned the creek here for us, you know, so you don't have to, instead of going for that, they went for our stuff. Mm -hmm. And the police just laughed. And told and, them, and, and just told and, us if you want to be homeless, you go to the next town. Yeah. And then wanted to take a picture of my turtle for their son after that. You know, it's like <laughs> yeah. cold, mm -hmm. cold people. I, mean, I never felt so, I have no words for how I felt that Who day. said that? None. Who said if you want to be homeless, go to the One of the Gary PD. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just recently since the No, this was in 2018. Yeah, this is when it was really bad, and they just came and just ram routed you out. And yeah. basically told us, you know, uh -huh. you got to go, and that's it. Um, nowhere, nowhere to go. And wintertime, you know, and, and tore apart our tent. Man, it's crazy. Yeah. You know, they just cut up our tent, took everything we had. I can't even tell you how I felt. Remember that? I have no words for that. Still, I could cry about it. Yeah. That's just, yeah. I was blown away by that. I'll bet. I'll bet because no human being deserves to be treated that way. And before I was homeless, I looked down on homeless, but now I'm out here and I know everybody's story, and, and, and that just made me. I just looked at them like, wow. I hope you're homeless someday, and that shouldn't be that way. But God. Did either of you um, seek attorneys we, at the time? We, we, what we, happened was. I've been trying for a long time to get things together, you know, but it's, it's really hard with everybody having their own minds and, 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 you know, what's going on is difficult. But we tried, but then there's a financial issue, whether it's $35 now, it will be $200, you know, um, especially when you're living daily. Uh, what, do you, what are you referring to that's $35? That's a court fee or, or, you know, things that they want to file. Uh, grievance or whatever it is that you have to do. You know, that's what I mean. We're not, we're not really informed about anything. So we we were under the impression that there's nothing we could do about it. You know, um, I still have the red tag yeah, that they gave us. Yeah, the red tag. Um, they, they literally played dirty pool. I mean, they, they said we're moving you out on this day. They gave us two weeks or something. But then they had the, the water district on the tag for the day before, which and the wasn't there. came 20 minutes before everybody came and said, oh good, you'll be out of here by the time it was, they just, and they, then 20 minutes later, they just, it was, yes, there he is. Then Everything. we called for our stuff and there was nothing. Yeah, they crushed it in front of us in the truck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Took our personal belongings, our food, all our heat, stove. We just bought groceries that day. Took everything. Has anyone else here been uh, subject to a suite before? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All of us, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. yeah. Was that one in, what year was that? 2018. 2018. I think that's the one that the yeah. city is still being. Yeah. Yeah, we, we were all in it, you know, and, and so we said, let's save the tag, you know. Yeah. Yes, because, good. Because, you know, there's yeah. things yeah. That, that we, I noticed right away, it was just wrong. I mean, come on. Right. You know, they, they got put on the tag afterwards. They used a city city tag for the San Jose yes. Water District. Uh, and, right. Coming and through. Two and then everybody ways. asked, where's my stuff? The city said the water district has it. The water district said the city has yeah. it. Everybody who was there saw it just being loaded right into the yeah, trash compact. Yeah, right they there. They're coming so, one day, yeah. and then they came a day early. Mm -hmm. you know, I remember. It was crazy. I mean, I had a feeling that was that one. Yeah. yeah it was bad. Yeah, I mean, we looked we looked into it, but I, because I, I, I like, 
research, so I, I kept looking yeah, for we, something to do, but I, I roadblocked yeah. everywhere I went. Yeah. Everywhere I wanted this amount of money or that amount of money, and, and there was no way. So we just gave up. Um, what you're describing is unfortunately very typical, and I think um, it probably will not surprise you to hear. I suspect that'll be how this new ordinance would be enforced, is the same mm -hmm. way. That's what I told everybody, when they come, they're going to come, they're going to sweep you all out. Everybody that's noticeable, anybody they see, and they're going to go beyond that red line. So we've got a limited period of time before mm -hmm. it is um, it, enforceable. There has got to be at least one city council hearing before then, and you had mentioned city council hearings. Yeah. So, you know, organizing to attend the next city council hearing is one tactic mm -hmm. that I would be, you know, pick happy it out. to... Pick it out front. To, to pick it. So one of the things to think about, I think picketing could be great, um, but picketing message. with a demand is even better. Right? Yes, message. You know, I was thinking if we got the uh, media involved, you know, I mean, it's hard to believe that Gilroy and San Jose don't get along, right? But you get to, like, them sell a mercury down and state your, what you're doing, and then they could, you know, that, yeah, dispatch is pro Gilroy. They won't, they won't go against the city. Yeah, dispatch is just not even. Media? They won't do it. You, you, they won't print anything against the city. Well, maybe maybe an, um, a national story, yes. or maybe you know the public radio, or maybe somebody that isn't you know beholden to the local politics would. Well, you know, I have some native friends that uh, they have radio stations or TV stations that I could talk to them and see if they'll do something for us. That'd be great. You know, I think they would. Um, that's another way of doing something, but you know, it's just getting everybody together to get true. everybody. The biggest, the hardest thing is to get us all to understand and agree on something. Mm -hmm. That's that's where I see the, the beginning is. Is uh, we have to band like you say, but it's easier said than done. With with you know, we all have attitudes out here, okay, sure. because of what's going on. So each of us is pissed off about something. And so we tend to bump heads, or we, we'll just keep talking about the same thing. And, and you know, we're not prepared or, or know how to do this. You know, it's not like we do it every day. Yeah. Right? You know, they don't write a book for this. Maybe we should. We make some money. There you go. There you go. <laughs> right? Well, that's yeah. that's where allies like Foundation is there. allies like us come in. Mm -hmm. Is yeah. that you know we have um, we have done things like this in other places, and we have a sense. Like for example, with with cases, I have a sense of what evidence needs to be gathered in order mm -hmm. to make you know some of these claims. I have a sense of what rights folks have that are likely to be violated by the ordinance and what the ordinance ostensibly allows in terms of living still here mm -hmm. in Gilroy. I, uh, I think there are things that we can do to help manage some of what you're talking about because mm -hmm. trying to trying to have a conversation where everybody ultimately agrees on one thing is really hard yeah. but again that's the benefit of, a, of like not to keep harping on the survey, but I, you know, yeah. one of the things that's useful about a survey instrument is people don't have to agree. They just respond with their own voice mm -hmm. of the of the ten options that are listed here. Yeah. Here's how I would rank them, and then we can say this is the top ranked option. This is the least ranked option. We can, you know, point out that mm -hmm. we've got a diverse group of people. I mean, you know, moms with kids, people who um, are dealing with glaucoma. I mean, there's any number of different issues that people have. They may not all want the same thing for very good reason. Not every human being needs right. the same thing, right. but everybody deserves to have something, and they have rights to prevent the city from doing what it seems intent on doing, which is a repeat of the 2018 sweeps. My biggest issue is Gilroy City Police Department and the City Council. They block everything. They block everything. They block yeah. everything. They're not trying to help. They're, they're compassion. Show me some compassion and come out for a week and do it the way we did, with no help. No, don't know where anything is. You, you have no money, no phone. You know, then tell me your compassion. And that's only a week. You know. That's how I got it. And, and see, yeah, <laughs> and see, and see what happens. Oh. You might, it wow. might change their view, but they won't do it. I thought about challenging them, not a challenge, but to say, uh, you know, if you really care that much, we'll try to be homeless for a week. You know, how many of you on the board would do it? If you really care, show us. Show us how much you care. Because they're not showing me anything, you know? They don't show me nothing. Yeah. Right.
Well, so how um, how can... Do you have any copies of the survey we can fill out right now? Or? I didn't bring any. So I thought we would be vetting the survey questions. Okay. Mm. But what I can do is, if we're, if we can, maybe what we can do is use, you know, some of this time to, to vet survey questions. Okay. And then we can, um, then we can move forward with the actual survey and plan to provide at least initial results, maybe, you know, by the, by the next city council hearing, you know, but we, we wouldn't have to hold ourselves to any artificial deadlines. Um, but since it sounds like folks are agreed that a survey would be good, before we talk questions, do folks have a sense of where we should go? Like about, like, who has an estimate of how many people we could actually reach if we were to spend some time? If we were to spend some time and really go out with this, yeah. we could reach just about everybody out here. You think so? Yes, because I was born and raised here, okay? I know all the people on the east side. Mm -hmm. Zeke knows all kinds. Yep. We all know everybody. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay. It's just a matter of so you like find you something said, to believe in. Yeah. yeah once you point point us in a direction, <laughs> then we'll take off and do yeah. it. Yeah. You see, but starting off is where our problem is. How many is everybody? Uh, I would uh, say, as far as everybody that we know, in Gilroy, yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, that's quite uh, a few. couple hundred. Uh, one family that's seven, seven to a thousand in just one family. With cousins and relatives, I'm a here in Gilroy. Here in Gilroy, that are outside. Lujan's dishes, uh, busy people, Peraltas, uh, gosh, Sanchez's, uh, Rodriguez's, and there's a couple more families. They're all in the same family. They all married. You know, yeah, within so, there. But I mean, are these people that are unhoused? No, no. These are people we know. Okay. But, uh, as we, need, we need support. We know. We know we know all the people that are homeless. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. We, we have our own thing. Okay. Uh, Christmas Hill homeless yeah. are different from Green Track. Yeah. Green Track homeless. Yes. Right, right. You know, all that. But we know each other. Right. Green Track, you said? Train, 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 train track. Train track. Train track. Um, right. We know each other, though. Yeah. yeah. We go, we go. I mean, we're all <laughs> different neighborhoods. We do have to talk to those yeah. folks, too. So, yeah. a lot of the guys that went to school are homeless. A lot of the women are homeless. It, it seems to be just an epidemic. Why? I don't know. But. That may come out later, but yeah, we can we can contact everybody. What about folks we in vehicles? Yeah. 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 Motor homes. Yeah. With, with the last point in time being 2021 or 2020 or in 2019. They did one. They did one in January of this year. And right. Yeah. But waiting for that number. What about the last number? It was, it was 866 the prior year. So closer to 900 to a thousand or so. See, Gilroy, Gilroy is is really simple to section off. And you could take it in groups like that, and you can find everybody, you know, because they keep their camp there, but they roam around. And in the evening, you go and you, you get that quadrant, one corner, you, you handle that while somebody else handles another corner, and we'll get everybody. Yep. You know, it's not that yeah, hard. Once we start talking, and other people start listening. Line, keep the garbage up. Garbage up. That makes a big difference. Yeah, I'm sure that's right. Well, um, as far as I know, in Salinas, you know, I mean, if you if you put stuff on the the public sidewalk or, or um, where a car parks, right. then uh, that's that's city property. Right. And so they they will take your garbage away at that point. Right. Right. You've done that. Yeah. Some of the city workers the here. There's, there's a few city workers that are sympathetic to our cause or, or our plight. Um, they've told me. Just put whatever you have out there, we'll pick it up. And, and that's cool. And I know it's not from the city telling them to do it. Yeah. You know, I know it's not because they would all be doing it. But it's only a select few that help us. It you needs know. to become the standard, the policy. I think you're right. I mean, for God's sakes, it's litter. Was that yeah, from the water exactly. you know, the picture up? Just documenting your place and, and showing that, that you know, it, it, you're being a good steward of the land. The more, more folks that we can prove doing that, we can dispel health and safety issue uh, and then it's just a matter of well if you don't want me here where can I be and collectively and of course running water electricity an actual roof an actual structure yeah. door that locks you know I mean like I said they, they had the FEMA trailers in Sacramento and in Novato they just had tents and a storage locker but that one locked as well and you could also lock the tent you know with the padlock but um, it was more or less safe there, and that's what you really are after is safety and security. Where can you be 24 hours a day? And, you know, abide by minimal health and safety guidelines. That's why they chose to come out here, because they felt safer out here. <laughs> watching Bill's getting ready to discuss the topic he came on this morning. I was watching it for tiny homes. They're already getting that in action, just like what we're trying to do at the Expo in Salinas. 
Yeah. Right, this place here is a whole, this, this, this town, Everything whole here different animal. Everything here to get things started. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I've been all my life. Yeah. I know there's people on the, on the committee. Yeah, they're corrupt as all heck. And I don't see that. I don't stand up and say it to anybody. This town's corrupt as, as could be. So, uh, thinking about information gathering, I, you know, um, the way I think about it, and it may be helpful to think about it in two different ways, the survey is to say, you know, like who you are, I'm from Gilroy, for example, and to say what you want. We want a place that looks like this, and it could be like, we want tiny homes, we want safe parking, we want sanctioned camps, whatever it is. That's what the survey data collection is for. There's also another process of information gathering that's going to be a lot more relevant to a court. And that's going to be what's you know what property do you own now that you want to keep that you think is going to be taken what's your health condition now where are you staying now so that when enforcement occurs if it occurs what does it look like after what did they take from you what was the condition of that like for example if they were to say we took a bicycle but you know um, we had to trash it documenting the good condition of that bicycle to show that it is absolutely right, not trash right, yeah. and that a person wanted to keep it is part of what helps build up an evidentiary basis to argue some of the, the claims that we talk about in a, uh, a legal training. So pictorial itemized uh, type of thing. Pictures can be great, documenting things can be great, even just a statement like, I have my ID, I've got medication and medical equipment, I've got clothes. Any significant as far as purchasing something you could just vibe with? It could, it could, because you know, for example, if we were to um, if we were to make an argument that after a sweep were to occur, if it were to look like it looked like for them, where this yeah. stuff just gets gathered up and thrown away, you're gonna say, I had I had this, I had that. Right. And they're gonna say, No, you didn't. You had a bunch of trash and what right. we did is a public service by throwing it all away. I mean, for God's sake. They, they were looking through our things. Yeah. And they yeah. were guys from Home mm -hmm. Depot that they hired. Mm -hmm. They weren't even part of the water district. They, had, they only had the, the supervisor there and all the cops. It. And they just let them, they were looking through everything I had. Taking my, my diamond jersey, my coin collection. I ended up just taking it back. Yeah. And after I said they something, gonna, they started bringing me their stuff. Yeah, after some I, of your things. Yeah, because they were going to, they said, no, you can't touch mm -hmm. anything. I was like, what the heck? Like little kids, they were just going through our things, you know? Yeah. Okay, and the cops just laughed. Which is, you know, it's just crazy. Not only terrible, but you know, they could be violating your rights by doing that, and certainly by taking it from you without having any ability to protest that deprivation and to get it back. Gilroy police officer said that what they are doing, conducted in 2018, was an illegal eviction, and they went about it wrong. That's what he said, and he said they're doing it, and he works with them. Who? The cop. Yeah. yeah. Do you know the name? Uh, we, uh, we, I were friends with the, we were friends with I the wife, okay. and then she, she explained to them, well, he actually, what we were told is that they were homeless before they came here to save money, you know, to get a home where they were going to move, and they picked this place to uh, get his job. Okay. Okay, and then he found out, like we know, and so he befriended us in a way, told her information, and she repeated it to us. So, um... Let's say, let's say, let's say that we move forward with information gathering because it seems right. like everybody understands the value of getting yeah. that information. I think it's going to be a real different thing if I, stranger, go up and say, "Hey, let me start taking pictures of you." Than if, if you, who know people, do. So, what if we were to move forward with a survey and with documenting evidence for purposes of? Not guaranteeing building a case because that may not, or I mean filing a case, that may right. not be ultimately what you want. I mean, mm -hmm. there's, there's pros and cons. I feel like we should talk about yes, those. Yes, definitely, definitely. Um, you, know, ex you know, exactly. There's mm -hmm. pros and cons. Yeah. But there are a lot of pros with building one. You don't have to file it just because you build it, you know. Right. And you're in, you keep your doors open and you um, yeah. set yourself up mm -hmm. for success if you build it. So what's the, what's the what's the process for doing it? Um, because you all have relationships, you know people. 
do you want to be the surveyors? Do you want to be yes, taking? Yeah, that's, that's probably yeah. the best thing because yeah. everybody yeah. knows each other. So yeah. it's not going to be like, well, who are you? Some Why are you taking the information? Type of thing, you know. Yeah. And everybody, will, I think everybody yeah, will open, open up, up more, a little bit more that way. Yeah. Because yeah. none of us, are, none of everybody out there is, is really leery of everybody. I'm yeah. sure. You know, it's gotten really bad out here. No trust, no nothing. No trust. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing. So, I think right there, the trust uh, issue. Consistency is going to be one of those things too, right? Yeah. Where where you where where have you been my whole life? You know. Then it would have to be people who don't, or how do I say, people who are going to go do a thorough job, no matter what your opinion or relationship is with a person. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They may not get along, but okay, today, here's what I'm here for. Let's blah, blah, blah. Let's yeah. Yeah. It's just yeah. not about that. It's about what we're striving for, you know? The permanent place to be, 24 yeah. hours a day. Yeah. Right. So what... Uh, assuming that people are, are down for doing that and surveying people mm -hmm. that they yeah. know because they think that, and I agree, you know, like you're likelier to get uh, true responses. Yes. What are the things that you would need? You need the physical surveys. We're probably talking yes. about paper surveys. Um, and maybe a card or something from reputable people or something that would show that we are doing this for the, the reasons okay. that we are. Because, right. you know, knowing that, that you're an advocate for us and, and the others, would be a big thing for them, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. because they don't have, they don't know, really, that there's yeah. anybody back in the cell. Yeah. So, you know, showing them something hopeless. would, would make them easier to talk to us. How about yeah. like a letter of introduction? Something like something that. Like something that, that, that you guys like know that. Would, would affect the uh, yeah. outcome. I like that. Yeah. yeah. yeah or cover page to go with the survey? Themselves to find out information from themselves, because yeah. we all, we, we that all would talk make to it. each other about information. Oh, yeah, all the time. But yet, some of us yeah. don't know that there's other information out there yeah. that we can get too that, 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 that'll help us out a little bit more yeah. or to help out somebody else, you know? Like yeah. until, until we saw you speak, me and Kelly, we were pretty much hopeless about this situation. Because yeah. oh I watched oh, this city council meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, right. So it brought us back to uh, you know, where we were. Teach, you know. and, and, and right is right and wrong is wrong. Like, That's right. Where was she? Where was she? The people that are causing problems are from Gilroy. Right? No, no, right, not. right. Yeah, yeah, not. Like, actually, I've been here for 65 years, born and raised. Some guys yelling at me, I'm on the side road. He doesn't know if I have a house or a home or I'm just riding my bike just to ride my bike. Telling me to get off the road. Go, go home. Well, home, I am home. This is my home. Mm -hmm. Where are you? Where'd you come from? You're bringing your bad habits from San Jose, from wherever, bringing them here because they moved here because it's a great town. People say, hello, hi, how you doing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, but yet they come and they say, who are you? What are you doing? I'm a Gilroyan. That's what mm -hmm. I am. You know, we're strong. We're going to stay down. If that, no, if hands or butts. Okay. You know, that's the problem. Why are you listening to some council people that never grew up here, never yeah. lived here? That's right. They want to fix Gilroy. Gilroy wasn't broken. Exactly. Yeah, it was a great town. You know, that's it was a the problem. Town. They're not educating them. They have no, no. I paid my taxes. I worked for it all my life. But what happened? Hey, a recession happened. Yeah. That's right. The judge told me I want you to get a job. I said, hey, I don't know, Your Honor, but I believe there's people out there with better credentials than mine that aren't working. So I don't think they could do that. But I'll try. And, and to think you that, that people think that if you get a job, you're going to get off the street. That's it. Yeah. That's, that's a false. Exactly. I mean, yeah. 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 What, what, what yeah. number does that bring you to, right? Yeah. Yeah. 20 hours a week. Get a job. They think that it's going to serve or solve everything. They don't I have mean, a clue. I mean, I'm like getting a part time job. Yeah, sure. I still couldn't afford yeah, it. Yeah, everybody's still working. Sure. But you got to get a, you got to get a first or last and good credit. Oh, yeah. 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 We lost all that when we lost our home. Yeah. Okay, so how do you get that? what we have. You, you, you have to buy stuff. Oh, okay, let's see. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The problem is, you know, we're homeless, we're in a rut. We're stuck. And they're keeping us stuck. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Right, they're making you poor. Yes. It's a big it's a big old facade. Yeah. That little meeting they had and all that. They're going to do it whether the council voted mm -hmm. on it or not. Yeah, they were going to yeah. ram us anyway. This is Gilroy. Yeah, this is Gilroy. Police are notoriously uh, corrupt. It's one of the corrupt, it comes out, it's one of the corrupt oh, yeah. in the nation. In it's the like United this, States. you know? You I know, pers I know personally, care. and this isn't just like the last yeah. couple of years. It's when I was a kid, I know a couple of cops that were, were on the tape, you mm -hmm. know, personal people, you know, and, and that's what they do. You know, they're, they're, they just want to get their 20 in and retire. Between me and some, my brother, the, some are coming out here and years. they want to do a little bit more, like punish people, because but they're not the punishers. They're not the ones that are supposed to be doing the punishing. We're getting punished for something that happened in our lives, not something that we did. Yeah. That's right. mm -hmm. You know, it's a big difference, you know. Yeah. Well, so, um, you know, we want to 
we want to move things forward. What, mm -hmm. what I can say is that there's a lot to be done and yes. building a case, for example, takes longer than the time that we have before they mm -hmm. can they start, start enforcing. Yeah. But there are things that we can do beforehand. Um, and you know, some of that includes getting folks educated about what it says in terms of what's prohibited, what is supposed to be allowed outside of that, what your rights are. We can initiate mm -hmm. some surveys. And I think you know, one fundamental thing is how do we all stay in touch? Yes, that's the other thing too, yeah. Um, so I, uh, I don't know, does everybody here, like how, how did you all know how to show up here today at this time? Word of mouth, mouth yeah. Word, yeah. Word of Jan. mouth. Yeah, Jan. Jan, Jan. Jan, yeah. Is there, um, do folks have uh, emails, mm -hmm. cell yes. phones? Yes, yeah, mailing addresses. Mm -hmm. What is, for this group here, not thinking about like right. broadly, but just for the folks here right now, what's the best way to stay in touch? Jan that, knows where everybody is. Yeah, that Jan too. Okay. Yes. Okay, great. So, um, so. I'm on next door also. Yeah. I'm surprised you can stomach it. I can't even. Oh, dude, I, I get all over them. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you know, that's another forum where public opinions are formed. Oh, yeah. and that's another oh, yeah. battleground, you know. Well, so. I think it mellowed out and they, they, they're stepping back and looking at it instead of being so animate about it, you know? Yeah. They're, taking, they're like, well, now where are they all going to go? <laughs> There's an example that they did, um, that they developed for Denver. Um, and it was a group that um, is a new group, but it was organized by a, an amazing woman named Therese Howard who's been out organizing folks in encampments in Denver for years, probably a decade now. And th that is what I would suggest is a good model for the survey here. And so maybe we could take some time if folks are okay with it, looking at some of the questions that they asked and we think about what what would make sense. I mean, it sounds like folks are all agreed we should ask about ties to the Gilroy community. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, That's a good one. are there other things that just off the top you know are good? Um, I'm just going to have a seat here. Yeah, great. Things that um, you know off the top of your head should be part of the survey questions to tell the story. Remember, the survey is mostly this is who we are, this is what we want. Uh, pretty much, I think, I think I speak for everybody here. What you guys suggest, we'll probably go with because, like I said, uh, we, we don't know what direction we're going in. We, we, you know, having a push is good, but having more information for us to go by, we could do better. Okay. We, we could do better. So, um, some of what the survey asks about are things like tiny homes, safe parking, organized space or sanctioned encampments. Um, are there things? You know, some of what we'd want to do is not ask about things that you absolutely don't want, you know. And since uh, this is the group here, our survey subcommittee, are there things that, in terms of options, ranking options, that you would want to be sure are included and anything that you want to be sure is not included? Because there's a lot of things. I yeah. Mean, there's so many things that I, I get frustrated. You know, it's a... I bumped my head against the tent. <laughs> You'd have a 55 page survey. Right. Oh, I guess that's another that's another important question. About how long should it be? I mean, since <laughs> since you know people, right. you're gonna have their attention for longer, but like there is of course such a thing as too long. Right. So um, what should, what should we be aiming for? Thirty five questions. Right. Okay. How much time like um, do you think a person twelve to fifteen minutes. 15 minutes. Yeah. You think we could get fifteen minutes with yeah. each person? That's that a lot of work. Be, that would be yeah, that that's it all would, seven pages. Well, that, it might take that It would that be, long. you know, yeah. wanting to stick it out. That's about as long as I think I can. But you can do several at one time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. true, too. Yeah. 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 So you don't have to do them seriously. Yeah. Right, right. Just set them yeah, down that's and right. explain. Thank you. Uh, speaking of that, I have forms for people if they want to register to vote. I don't know I if everybody's voted vote. or oh, yeah, registered yeah, to vote. Yeah. Okay. I have a form here if you want. Well, I filled it out, but it never happened. Yeah. You want to you do one? Yeah, I'll do one. Okay. I mean, That'd be great. I've become anti, you know. Right. Well, uh, uh, no yeah. party preference. Yes. Mine is just more like, you know, the immediate. I've become to this point where I'm only worried about the immediate around me, not, not anything else anymore. You know, it's gotten to that point where, you know, something's really wrong here. It's just not, something's really wrong. There are a lot of things wrong. I'm glad you brought that. Thank you, Robert. That's yeah. great. Because, you know, we, t we talked about, um, you know, somebody being on the city council. And like I said, 5,000 votes gets you on the city council. Mm -hmm. 
I think I came in about 600 short. Yeah. Oh. So, so how many people did so, you say you could get a hold of? Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, think about the count, right? Like, right. So. that's that's just one voting block. You gotta have someone to believe in, you know, um, or someone you believe will fulfill the role. This is this guy, uh, Robbie Palson. He's from uh, Marin County. I was talking about the Novato thing earlier, and um, uh, you know, I was asking him about what kind of steps, you know, did you guys go through to start that lawsuit? Right. So, um, Robbie, go ahead. Yeah, are you in a meeting right now? Uh, well, we're in a meeting. We're, we're at uh, Christmas Hill Park in Gilroy. They're about to pass an ordinance uh, banning living, sleeping, uh, uh, lying, down. lying down, you know, existing, sitting. Owning property. Owning property. Uh, so, so we have about a dozen folks here, and we, we've been uh, brainstorming for a little while, and uh, that's why I sent you the email. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I can... Uh help you guys walk through that. Okay. Do you know when they're going to pass the ordinance? Uh, they already passed it. It'll be, it'll be in effect probably in another three weeks. July 19th. July 19th. You know, Camp Compassion, a big, big part of it was state-created danger based on the COVID-19 pandemic. But there's other, uh, there's a couple different causes of action that kind of was the focus of the, um, uh, of the restraint or one was the Eighth Amendment or that they're criminalizing involuntary conduct that, that is impossible to avoid. So that's the Eighth Amendment claim under Martin versus Boise. Then the other is uh, state created danger, which is that the ordinance in uh, in Nevada, especially during the was about um, that would expose people to particularized dangers, which namely was uh, COVID-19 at the time, but could be a lot of different, um, there could be a lot of different dangers that you could say are being, you know, the ordinance is going to put campers in, you know, being forced to move all the time, which there's a lot of reasons that could be. The other was, um, uh, you know, Fourth Amendment, that the uh, ordinances uh, create unreasonable searches and seizures of people's property. Um, and then there's, and, you know, and, and then there's other claims to take, but yeah, mainly those constitutional questions. And, um, you know, if, uh, uh, if people want to uh, litigate a lawsuit and you got like a good crew of people that want to pursue that and kind of follow up, I can, uh, I'm working on a, a handbook right now that kind of walks people through the steps of litigating restraining orders without an attorney if you don't have access to an attorney uh, this is the handbook is you know kind of show you the steps especially to get that first restraining order um yeah so uh um, awesome. that's something well will you yeah. Yeah, um i'm gonna if it's all right can i give your number to a couple of folks uh yeah. okay good so then they can go one-on-one -on -one. Uh, and then, um, so, so what I, what I remember when I first rolled up, you know, the ordinance was happening in like uh, a week or something like that. And then we were able to, like Jason had all the numbers of all the places that, um, that, you know, were available to go and he'd prove like, this is how many are, are available. This is how many of the wait lists. These are the requirements, the health requirements that are needed. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's an important factor of it, uh, that you want to, you want to start calling the uh, shelters and see if there's adequate shelter availability there's not and that and that's a uh, yeah. that's it it's not did I hear somebody say it's yes not? Yeah. correct good good so that's that's in your favor for restraining the injunction under the eighth amendment or when all, all the amendments actually it's really <laughs> everything because you're gonna say again this is uh, there's no option you know there's there there pretending there are options when in fact there are no options yeah. so yeah you want to start documenting all the services or shelters that are available and then and then just you know penetrate are they actually the way you would do that is you you write down with declarations sworn on penalty of perjury the date times that you call the shelters asking for shelter um, you know the date and time that um, you know, ha have they 
you know, has the city of Gilroy destroyed anybody's property down there? Oh, yeah. And did they destroy people's property? They haven't stored it. Nope. No, they didn't. So that's the Fourth Amendment claim. So you say they've been unreasonably seizing people's property. They've been taking it. That's a Fifth Amendment claim, destroying it. So that's what you want to document. And you have to be very specific when you document. You have to, because the judge, the judge needs to know kind of the approximate date and time that these things occurred. You need to document when you call the shelters. You need to, you know, note the date and time that you called, who picked up the phone from the service agency, who answered, what time did they answer, what did they tell you. So you have to be kind of almost repetitively specific about all your evidence. So that's that's important. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. And you know, keep you know, all them organized centers keep protesting and keep getting that media attention and all all that good stuff I know you're already doing. So But I can definitely assist one way or the other. Awesome. Okay. Wonderful. All right. Cool. All, all right. right, much love y'all. Right on, man. Thank you much. All right. All right. Peace. Peace. Bye. Right on. Well, you got a little bit of support. It might be remote, but, you know, I mean, really, it's the energy right here, you know, and, and you're already showing the love. So I, I think that that's one of the biggest things is just proving that we're the polar opposite of what they expect to find. Drug addict, criminal, whatever. And if, if you don't want us to be dirty, well, then open a bathroom. You know, let us have some showers. Like, there's a place in Closer Walk, in Salinas, that uh, the guy was actually having some mobile showers come, and, uh, and the city blocked them made them leave after two times so i mean you know it's real and, and nobody wants no jurisdiction really wants to support folks that's why we have to work extra harder to prove we're the polar opposite where they expect to find especially here i'll tell you boss check it out what they do is they have their own little meetings and they go to the to the businesses around here and they're teaching them how not to help us you know how, how what not to do don't give us money. You know, oh, yeah, we're not all asking for money. Out, yeah. Sign, they put out paper. Stuff. Yeah. That's right. That flyer. I have one. Yeah. Of those. It's like it's like what the I heck? Forgot about so, that. automatically, you know, you got those eyes watching you too. You got all this, all this. You know, they got the business here, and, and then they they say get a job. Oh heck, you got all the businesses watching you walk around back and forth. They don't want to hire a homeless person. They're still in the myth that we're going to take from you. You know, and it's the opposite. If anything, we're going to help people on the street when we see somebody getting the mugged or, or raped or something. I know damn well, all of us would go and do something. You know, yeah, different sides of the tracks, there's different mentality, you know, but we're not all trying to hurt anybody. I you found know? a credit card the other day. When yeah. I do, I found the woman I How many times it? we find wallets and purses and we give them back? You know, I mean, come on. Yeah, they let them well, This is what's there. pissing me off is that, you know, we're getting a raw deal here. And these guys are so corrupt, it's crazy. Like I said, it, it could be dangerous with these police. They're, they're, Not so much you know, the people that are doing it now, it's what they're teaching their kids. Yes. Because right. no the education. kids are yelling, they don't even know what they're yelling or why they're yelling right. and upsetting and stuff. You know, go home, you don't have a home, get out of here. They're just here around the dinner table. And this is what they do. They come out to enjoy the park, but they enjoy more yelling at the homeless. Or, or create a scene or or, or something. Look, we try to yeah, avoid yeah, people. To yeah. that. We try to avoid we come people. come in at night for we a go reason. shopping at night at 10, 11 o'clock <laughs> so we don't have to deal with them. So we're not in their, in their view. Outside, out of mind. Yeah, you know, we don't want to be in their view, you know. But they got a world of shit coming because, you know, I'm going to be in their view. And that's, a, that's a crying shame that people can't walk the street without being judged yeah. or uh, being punished. Yeah, just being judge. Judge. You can judge me all you want. But I only have one judger, and he's up there. So that, that has nothing to do with Make sure it's right. I don't care it. what they say. That's their that's their opinion. They're yeah. right to that opinion. But voicing their opinion out loud, in in a, in a in a hateful manner, is just going to make things worse. They're putting fuel on the fire. You know, um, because some of these people out here, you know, you, you could only take so much yeah. before you break and snap. And yeah. we're already broken. Okay, we're here. Snapping is the next thing. Yeah. And, and that's why a lot of us go to jail. But it sounds like folks are down to do a survey and also don't have strong opinions about what it is so long as it gets at um, what people want and identifying their stories and it's no longer than 15 minutes and something right. that'd be in English and Spanish.
Um, if I get a bunch of them printed out tomorrow, what's the fastest I'd be able to deliver them to folks who are willing to start administering well, I'll them? I'll be here tomorrow when you come. Here all day. Yeah. 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 Once this gets going and we start to get out there and, and tell people or show them what's up, you'd be surprised. That's what they're waiting for, too. Mm -hmm. well, you know, there's a lot of people here that are old Mexican and, and you know, they don't, uh, they're not really, like, you know, educated on things. So once we get out there, they'll start asking questions. So the survey could be 15 minutes, but I know we'd spend more time if it's needed to be explained to them what's happening. Sure. You know, that, that's a given. Sure. Well, we, we, with those surveys, be sure to write notes of anything that, that stands yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. you got to make that feel like... Because we, we don't have the same problems that people yeah. have in yeah. town. Yeah, yeah. You know, people that are in town, have, they got a little bit, you know, they got to get up at the crack of dawn, get off the street. They got yeah. a lot of things they got to do. We're over here, we're, we're embedded in, in our little spot, you know. But over there in town, you know, you, they got merchants, they got kids going to school, they got just people that having a bad day decide to take it out on us because nobody kills them. Uh, Line flipping. Uh, uh, you know, again, education. And, and you think, you think well, there's things going on out here that concerned citizens are calling in and they're not getting the response because they think they're homeless. And they're, they're, they own these fucking million dollar houses. But they're not, they're, they're, until one of them gets hit on this road for these people speeding, or one of their oh, kids yeah. get hit, it's bad. they're not going to do nothing. It's but bad. they go up and down this road at a, a crazy amount of speed. Mm -hmm. They never did it before until those homes were so bought. Yep. And a majority of the people are from out of yep. town. Yeah. Yep. So why are they, you know, that's a whole problem. That's a problem. Not mm -hmm. the homeless. We're not the problem. Yeah. You know it's the people don't... that don't know that we're from this town, born and raised. The majority of everybody here is born and raised. You know, they let we, knew, the we know everybody out by here. face. Mm -hmm. We know every, you know, at one time we know every street. You knew, you'd rather be deal, you'd rather not deal, you'd rather deal with uh, yeah, the cops than your parents now. because the cops will come tell your parents. You know, oh no, I'm not going home. You know why? Yeah, we'll go talk to your dad. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> you know, they just go well, talk to them. That's the kind of relationship that at one time here it was a very neat, neat community, a little tight. You know. Everybody said hi, and that's what, what they brought. That's the problem. That's what bottom here. That's what changed them with their opinions and their judgment, judgmental. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. I, I, mean, I mean, Christian people aren't supposed to do that. And I, I give you 99% of them raise their hand that they're Christian and they're yeah. God fearing and all that. But they don't mm -hmm. fear God because nope. if they did, they wouldn't be doing what they do. That's right. Doing what yeah. they do. Not when we come what out. do folks think about this? I mean, we could use we could use the time in other ways too, right? Like we can go over the surveys, but we right. also could go over the ordinance and look at what it yeah. Yeah. what it restricts, yeah. what it doesn't, Ooh. as you know, like a step one. Um, you know, I think I think getting the guidebook and maybe Robbie would be down to do like a you know a series or like a co-presentation right. or whatever. I mean, like I've got a bunch of uh, trainings on the legal rights, but like that that. Um, it doesn't good. need to happen tomorrow. It There's was, more time sensitive things. Yeah. It's good to know how to combat these things. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, maybe uh, when, I don't know how you would know what they would start off with, but I mean, at least we could get something there so that we can. Just some numbers. Yeah, some, some numbers. Uh, some, uh, what do you call that? Some, <coughs> some information. Well, you know, if you sound like you know what you're talking about, they back off. Yeah, okay. There's some things that I think that could be. Um, very light touch for purposes of tomorrow, like know your rights kind of material. Yes. Right. Yeah. And we could go over, we could go over at least that and what the ordinance says. And um, so that we have a sense of what it, you know, on paper, what it restricts and what it, um, you know, allegedly leaves open. And then we could also go over the survey and we'll do that tomorrow at six o'clock here. All right. Okay. And if possible, underlined or highlighted or something, those very important things. Because we'll, we'll, you know, we're gonna, you're going to give them to us, right? Right down, and then we're going to find out about how to apply them as we're doing it in the yeah. faster way and the better way oh, yeah. to you know show them the, the highlighted things oh. that we really need to know. And a lot of those police don't even know the rights, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. You know, they're, they're, they're just they're, following orders, yeah, they're just doing whatever they think in their head sounds like what they heard before. You know, a lot of this stuff is like hearsay, and they, they say, Oh, you can't ride the bike here, or whatever, you know, just for example. You match the description. In this town, you can. Cupertino, you can. But they want to put that everywhere just to pull you over. You know, just to get you to pull over, they tell you you can't ride on the side. You can argue the point, yes, you can. And they'll say no. They'll put you in jail anyway. Yeah, you can't just walk in. You have to have a. And, and, and it's first come, first serve. You have to fill out an application now. You yeah. can't just. You can't yeah. just 
come sure, down there and, and, and they're already filled up and people are saying, Yeah, they come. Look weird. at all the buses that come down here and uh, I was yeah, looking Yeah, well, they send them. Yeah, they, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, they did that on one time. They, they gave them tokens to go on the bus to come down here. Right, because mm -hmm. right, they fill up all the In the wintertime, the crime rate goes up. It's up because of us. That's when they come in front of San Jose, they come in here, and that's when the crime rate goes up. Well, I, I don't know that for sure. I do. <laughs> we do. Yeah. We do. I, I don't know that for sure. I mean, you don't want to point fingers at other homeless. Yeah. Well, no, but yeah. San Jose is a town, and, and I'm talking still, about, you know, I don't you know, care. You're, 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 it's beyond that now. Yeah. Truthfully, it's beyond that. You're going you're gonna to create havoc within. They're not going to be here. Yeah, they, well, they just use this place. Yeah, yeah. So still, I don't care what they think. But unhoused people don't come here other than to go stay at the armory. Yeah. They don't come here for any other reason. Yeah. There's plenty of services available in San Jose. Well, a lot more than there is I don't know. Yeah, we're, we're, but, we're, but we're we the, see the, the where they say different um, access yeah. but not actual yeah. service. Yeah. Uh, I, I, they used different. to when the compassion I, I, center there all the time. came out. Do you, do you know who the... There's nowhere in the Nowhere. Yeah. No emergency how how do that work? You have to go to Sally. If you can't get away from your man here in uh, you know in, in San Jose, what makes you think you're gonna get away from your man and go away, then go to San Jose? They, you know, they have no place for that. You have to go to San Jose for any time. Everything is naive. Yeah. They yeah. have everything it's you know, naive. You know, they, and and, and I, I I believe Joe had something to do with it. I'm pretty sure that they well, But but you know. the other thing to be fair, San Jose is the third largest city in California. So they do have a lot of services. Yes right? they do. But they tell us about county. it. Yeah. And they bounce back and forth using it. Yeah. yeah. So no, I'm, but I'm not telling county. you guys to not go there or I'm not telling you that, that those people are all coming here. I'm not I'm not doing that. I was just merely trying to figure out, I knew about the, the uh, armor, yeah. but I didn't know if there were any other places no. out there. Because that, I mean, that, that limits pretty much how many people they can have yeah, to be yeah. sheltered. Yeah, I know. They, they, they're, they're at the capacity event. I we went there one day and they said, man, what can you pay for on the on the side door, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You pay for yeah. no, no, I'll, no, I'll take that, I'll take that anytime. What, what about warming centers? Do they open up any warming centers? The library. The library. McDonald's? <laughs> the library, yeah. It's going to get real hot this weekend. It's going to get real hot. And the library, they let us go. I, mean, I, I built a dam, so but the, we got but water. there's no cooling centers. The library. So they do the, the library. library. Yeah. And they, yeah, they get cold. Do you guys know who your uh, board of supervisor representative is? Uh, <laughs> like years and years ago. Who was it years and years ago? Six Six Sanchez. Sanchez. Oh, shoot, that was a long time ago. That's when things were running kind about, of good. Um, Thank you. So they were talking about it at the... Sylvia Arenas. Yeah, I think that's right. Okay. That must be right. Well, yeah, right. that is right. That's right, because yeah, I just that's to hear what they guys. commented yeah, about. She needs yeah. to come down here <coughs> to blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I know, I know her. I, I can have a conversation with her. That'd about, be great to get yeah. down. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I mean, if you're going to clean house, might as well fix everything. Yeah. Because yeah. it yeah. all coincides with each other. That's right. You know? Yeah, it all works hand in hand from from everything. That's well, the, so the, <laughs> the county has a responsibility for health and welfare, right. not the city. Okay, so when we're talking about Process. a safe place for people to go, the county has that responsibility, not the city. Okay. Well, you know, it's funny because the city puts themselves in everything so that they don't have to do those things. But they're you not required to, to do those things, that's my, what I'm saying. Right, right. But how funny they get in it, though. That's a good point, though. Yeah. That's a good point, that the strategy needs to include the county. Which is why I want to bring Sylvia. Yeah. 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 That would be great. Yeah. Yeah. The more you guys give us, the more we'll understand, the more we can find our own direction, like at, at home tonight. We'll pop up with ideas, things will come up, you know. Yeah. And the more you give, the more we'll get. We'll yeah, get back. At first, you have all the ideas. You have Ideas are grander, but uh, they just go out the window as you run into these yeah. walls. You know, and walls too big to look at and go under. Thicker and thicker. Under thicker, under thicker. You know, not just tall, tall, but thick, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, you can knock down a wall, but, you know, it takes a lot. Especially being that these people here have built a great wall. They got a good foundation. Yeah, ask another question. Do they require you, first of all, this is the city part, right? Not yes. Yet. Okay. Do they require you to get a permit or something in order to have a large group of people? Yes, yeah. they do. 
I mean, what, what is a large group? It's not a, it's not a, they don't, they don't yeah, just buy the group. They, they just buy the group. I think it's a hundred or more. Okay, you want, you want the Oh, that's right, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. This area right here. That's true. I remember reading that. That's another area. Yeah. Well, we, we would want something that's just continuous. Here. Yeah, yeah. So, so it, would, it would be, it would be, it would be, uh, so do you know what these areas are yeah, called? Yeah, this one is, uh, this is Mulberry. This is, uh, uh, yeah, east. East, west. west. Mulberry, yeah. 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 There's signs right there. Okay, all right, because I'm going to get Sylvia to pay for that. I think it's like 100 right. or 200. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and pay, pay for the permit that's required. And I actually, I want to like get her to pay for the hot dogs. <laughs> we have hey, a hot we know dog a hot dog man. vendor. Yeah, 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 yeah but we're not going to buy them. Oh, we're going to get them. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, yeah gotcha. Well, you know, Santa Cruz, God, Santa Cruz got you. I, I was I was staying for a couple of years and they oh, got you know what a lot of help. Yeah, they, food not bombs. Yeah, yeah, they, they yeah. Food not bombs. Yes. Yeah, the, the way they treat the homeless and the community itself in general. Yeah, they're too good. It's a whole different cha cha. It's like, well, yeah, they got their and there again, you know, yeah, they, they, they get attacked by the police constantly. In fact, in Houston, they're getting ticketed all the time now. Yeah, um, but, but it, a big thing was that, that they were taking pictures every day, you know, because that was the thing. They're, oh, they're leaving all this litter behind. Take picture before, take picture after, show that it's always better, you know, because it was. Uh, but then there would be an apartment lady, she'd come and strew her garbage all over, the, oh, and take a picture. Oh. But then that's, that's where that proof comes in. Right. Can right. you prove otherwise? Right. Otherwise, what she says will go. That's why the COIA of just document, 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 organize together, stick together, and, and then somebody out of that group hopefully has power charger, Jan can get you power. Um, get those uh, portable battery things, you know, mm -hmm. um, something that, that keeps your electricity going because somebody you needs to document. Yeah. If not you, somebody. And, and if you can work collectively as a group to do certain tasks, not everybody has to pick up litter, but somebody needs to do it, right? Yeah, right. So, Take know that one. Right? Well, and, and honestly, dude, I'm a giver. Everybody should just be a giver <laughs> right. and just fucking do it, you know? Yes. Like, it doesn't have to be, oh, I'm not, it's not my job. Yeah. Fuck right. that attitude, dude. We one thing, up. so we all should be Regardless. picky and just do whatever. I was picking up garbage here in the park the other day, and some guy goes, oh, man, it's so great that you're doing this. You know yeah. those damn homeless people? I said, yeah, you know those damn homeless people. Yeah, he's <laughs> not realizing you know, he's homeless. I, I, and then, he, then he looked at me, and he saw the bag of recycling. And the two of you together. And I plugged in the charger, and I said, jump up on the bench, and... Oh, I guess he could have put it. But he was, uh, <laughs> you don't look homeless. <laughs> but he, but he, he said, said you don't look homeless. He talked to me for about an hour before he realized that I was homeless. Well, what, what does a homeless person look like? Exactly. 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 Well, you're right. basically right. saying you don't have to yeah. look homeless to be homeless. So, yeah. I, I would also like to do a... Uh, uh, a demonstration out here once this thing passes on the 19th or after. Uh, get some housed and unhoused people to come and lay down. Come and sit. All your family. Come and lay down, you know. We'll be profiled. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you got to get your family to come out, dude. What we really need is a wall of community in front. That's actually how Santa Cruz did it. They had 40 people locking arms, and that's how they saved San Lorenzo Park. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, Zeke and I were talking, and Zeke came up with the idea of having a rally that we could put together. You know, get a rally going to get some support also. There's another thing that Zeke over there was, we discussed about before. Yeah. yeah. That's what it is. How many people are interested in joining a union? Mm. Yeah. All right. We were hey. One, but we said All right. I'll, I'll bring, you got shirts? I'll bring union shirts. I have like about mm -hmm. 10. I think that's one for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. do it. So, yeah. Yeah. Work, you brought shirts? Yeah. Oh, yeah. we talked about it. We're part of the uh, California Home Union. Okay. okay. So this this chapter right. is part of the Santa Clara County. Oh, okay. 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 Because then I'm not So the Santa Clara and then. Got it. Oh, I don't know what it went. Salinas right here. Okay. And then we have people all throughout the state. Yeah. Right. So we try to kind of be all the same. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. But we can, we can do something. It's yeah. a common goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. gotcha. And then there's a national. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So what about the name? Thank you. Oh, wow. Okay. We, have, uh, <laughs> we have people in Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, we do. We have regular meetings. Um, um, Miami. The the ones the group that meets more often yeah. is for <laughs> California. Okay. We're the largest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not recently. And then like I, Chicago has I'm their meetings. I'm from Seattle area, stuff, but I started my local career there. And every once in a while, we all get together 
and have like a national or right. Take it off your We're a part of this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, be wearing it every day, huh?